This is CAD 102 and I'm going to begin by doing a relatively fun project which is a guitar amplifier. Uh, early model Fender using tubes and we're going to do a two tube Fender Champ app equivalent circuit and we're going to show you how to draw that in CAD. We're going to take our basket of components we made earlier and we're going to begin and draw this tube amp and it's going to be uh, about three parts on this so we'll start with part one the beginning of doing the tube amp in CAD for a schematic diagram so this is putting a slight positive voltage on the screen grid now we have to have our connection to our anode so I made another resistor and we're going to drag out the lead on the left hand side of the resistor and make a connection to our anode or the plate if you want to call it that okay so we've got these two resistors uh, it'd be about a 2 meg going to the screen grid and a 250k going to the anode so we're putting a heavy positive bias on the anode and a slight positive bias on the screen grid uh, which will make the tube conduct and then as the signal comes in from the guitar you can then have amplification because a very small signal modulates a very large current flow through the tube when it drops, on, drops across resistors down the way it uh, then becomes a large change in voltage so we have amplification. The output phase is opposite the input phase. Okay I'm putting a coupling cap in now. It should be about a 0.02 microfarad 600 and this decouples DC but passes AC to the next stage of amplification which would be a 6V6 I think in this case and we want a uh, volume control screen. I'm grabbing this potentiometer and we'll take this potentiometer and we're going to paste it and then we have to rotate it where it can connect to the cap so I'm rotating it and I'm going to move it over here where we can connect it to the capacitor so the AC signal from I guess you would want to call this the preamp is being fed to the output amp and we're going to control our volume with this wiper arm on this uh, volume control. Reminding you that this plate resistor we put up in here in the top is uh, to provide the uh, high positive voltage to the top of the tube for conduction. So we connect one side of this um, volume control to ground and we're going to connect the other side of the volume control to the capacitor, the coupling capacitor, and so that means when you put the wiper arm of the volume control all the way down to ground there's no signal at all and when you put the wiper arm at the very top of the volume control it's maximum signal so at the top uh, this would usually be, a, be around a one mega ohm uh, potentiometer at the top it would be directly connecting to that capacitor and so you'd have maximum volume and at the bottom you'd be directly connecting the ground so you'd have nothing and so this will then connect to the grid on the uh, 6v6 let's cut out this wire coming from the cathode so that we can connect from the other side and I'm going to actually put the traditional little line going down on the cathode so it looks more like the traditional drawing for a tube and we'll clean it up a little bit now we'll take the wire that goes from the grid and draw it down so we can connect to the wiper arm on the volume control. So what this is doing is it's putting more or less signal on that grid which then modulates the current flow through the properly biased tube. You have the proper bias for conduction and then you have the signal that controls how much conduction which is what gives us amplification. So basically that's got our connection from the volume control to the output amplifier. 
Now I want to get our filament voltage to it, so I'm just going to copy the connectors on the other tube to save time, and I want to paste it. So there we have our ground and our plus 6.3, not, it's not plus 6.3, it's AC 6.3 volts. So that's got that connection going. Now we got to connect to the second grid. The 6V6 is a beam power tetrode vacuum tube. The first of its family of tubes to be introduced was a 6V6 by Kenrad Tube and Lamp Corporation in 1936 with availability by December of that year in both Kenrad and Raytheon. 6V6 tubes are still used in audio applications, especially in electronic guitar amplifiers. And we'll draw a line across connecting these bias points. And we're going to go to a bypass cap. To protect us from surge, which would be like an 8 microfarad around 450 volts, I suppose. We'll clean up this uh, anode so that we're only connecting from the top. And then let's grab a transformer from our bin of, um, our basket of components and put it over here to the left. Now, in this case, the transformer is going to be mounted where the actual plate current, I mean the plate voltage is going through the transformer so the primary on this transformer is going to have a pretty high DC voltage on it and that will pass right through that uh, transformer and bias the tube. So now we've made a connection from one side of the transformer to our anode on the tube. Lots of times they would put a capacitor right across the winding on the primary of the tube just to be a spark gap to protect the tube and the transformer in the event of a voltage surge. On this particular one, I'm not putting it in there because I'm trying to keep it close to the original. Right now I'm going to copy my speaker and we're going to paste it and that's going to of course be on the output winding of this transformer now to make it connect, what I'm going to do is actually just cut the windings with the select tool. I mean, not cut the windings, cut the, the input to the speaker on the select tool. And then drag the wire connections over to the speaker so it connects evenly. We're doing the first, the top one, now we're going to do the bottom one. So basically, we're, we're doing uh, impedance matching the primary on this transformer is going to be around 5,000 ohms and the secondary is going to be 8 ohms to match the speaker. Now in the old days they'd actually have a high impedance speaker but those are awfully hard to make and so they went to uh, speaker impedance matching transformers like we installed here. We're going to copy a resistor and then we're going to move it to this part of the circuit here. Now what this resistor is for, it brings positive voltage to the rest of the circuit. It drops it down a little, but it, it makes positive voltage for uh, the grid biases, you know, for the screen grids. And so that gives a screen, screen grid bias on both the tubes through that resistor. And we're going to drag our connection over here and go to the winding or the high voltage input to the circuit which is at this point right here. I'm going to clean up this wire down here on the bottom of this circuit and we still have to install that uh, bypass uh, surge protector cap. 
So I'll just copy this cap from over here and I will connect it down on the bottom here on this positive voltage input. Mainly, you know, this is this is a part of the a DC part of the circuit, even though you'll have a little trickle of AC in this area. But if we were to have a voltage surge, that, that cap would uh, be a spark gap actually. And so it also provides some filtering. It also provides some filtering, but it also is a surge protection. So uh, we're gonna, this is our basic circuit. Now you can see the way it's all put together now. We wanna clean it up some. Now we, I could draw the power supply. The power supply typically would be a 5Y3, uh, which is a dual triode, and then it, you would use a center tap transformer and feed two uh, inputs on the triode, and then, and then you would have a positive voltage uh, going to your uh, system. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw an example of a um, power supply here. So I'll go here and we will make a box and this box will represent our power supply. Now what I'm going to do, see I'm going to make a little triangle here. Now if you remember, the I'm making a little triangle here for the uh, symbol that feeds the heater voltages on the tubes and so that's a 6.3 volt now I'm making a line coming out which represents our positive voltage this would have to be a high positive voltage in the area of uh, 350 to 450 volts to bias those tubes and so this is a this is a circuit what you wouldn't really want to be putting your hands in when it's running because tubes require high dangerous voltages so we've got our positive voltage from our power supply. Now remember this power supply, even though it isn't shown, is connected to chassis ground. So I'm showing the positive connections coming out or the AC connections coming out. Now we're putting in the 6.3 volt connection that is going to the uh, connectors on the filaments of the tubes. But ground is, this power supply is connected to ground and so that's the other side of the circuit. Now I want to connect this to the AC wall plug. Look how I make a circle here. I'll draw a circle. I'll cut it in half using the selector tool. And now I'm going to draw a line to make the finish off the plug drawing and then draw two lines through it to indicate a connection that is an AC uh, plug. So here's our AC plug. We're making it right now. And that's going into the power supply. So that pretty much completes the whole circuit. But what I'd like to do is um, is, you know, name some of these components and put some values in so that if you actually had to build this circuit, you could. And this is an example of, you know, you could take any of these components and you could draw any kind of um, electronic circuit just by getting the right components and putting them in the right places like we're doing here. And the wonderful thing about it is you didn't have to buy a thing because this is already in your uh, Windows uh, computer. You can, every Windows computer comes with it and every Mac computer comes with something similar. Now, we're going to get you know, to other classes where we have the the uh, vector-based drawings and they're a little bit harder to learn. One thing about it is the vector-based drawings, even though that's the standard for CAD because they're scalable and uh, in many cases they don't require a lot of uh, file size. Sometimes they do depending if you get the three-dimensional CAD. But uh, they're expensive and uh, this will actually teach you a lot about how to do CAD or drawings electronic drawings and you see right here I'm naming all the devices in important sections like uh, so that you know we will know what things are and if you had to actually build this circuit you would you would have the information necessary to construct the circuit so I'm going to then just start naming everything and bring it in here so what I like what I do is I just type all the things I'm going to name in this box and then I drag them into place using the selection tool. And so I'm just you know, looking at all the components, I'm typing them in and then I'm going to drag them into the appropriate place. 
And this is just an example. You could put any information you wanted. Sometimes I've uh, drawn a spreadsheet with all of the um, information about the individual component parts. And then, as a matter of fact, I've made a screen copy of uh, an Excel document in some cases and then put parts of that on this drawing to cover everything. You, you can do that. You can put all kinds of information. This is, program, even though it's simple, is very powerful in the, the things you can do with it. And, uh, you, you know, lots of people consider this uh, bitmap a lot more artistic, or allows you to be a lot more artistic than a vector-based drawing. There, there'll be a lot of people who have different opinions on that. But it's free, and you can do almost anything with it. And right now I'm just demonstrating how to do a basic uh, schematic diagram. Now that I've got it finished, I'm going to cut the section or copy the section and then put it on a completely new document where I can uh, separate it from all the uh, basket of components and so forth. So I'm pasting it. And of course I'm going to zoom out so I can see it all. And then I'm going to size the, the, the page to fit the drawing. And lots of times, you know, like this might fit into the size for a, um, a legal document if you uh, print it as a, a landscape and not a portrait. This would fit right on a legal document or on a web page or whatever. So now I have this and I'm going to save it and then we'll take a look at the drawing in a larger form and there you are. And that's not a bad looking um, schematic diagram actually for something we did on Windows Paint, you know, and it, it certainly looks like a lot better than something that's hand drawn. Once you get used to doing this, it's not that difficult at all.